Greetings, soul family. It's Teal here. Welcome to another video. Today, I want to talk about the power of the slut. Now, this can be applied either to gender, as far as male, female, or however you identify. This is the power of the sexual, divine, feminine energy that comes and manifests through you. Um, and we're also going to get into slut shaming and why that is so toxic and keeps us down and furthers into that oppressive energy, which in doing so, it actually takes us away further from the divine energies, away from the spirits, away from ascension, and we're going to talk about why that is. And then we're also going to kind of briefly go over porn, as I have in the past, and why that can also be beneficial into your spiritual workings. So, in times of ancient times, you had the Roman orgies. You had the Aphrodite temple, where the women were sacred Whores. We can also see this um, within Mesopotamia, as well as um, some evidence that shows even in Iceland, the satyrs or the vulvas were also prostitutes that used the energy to help connect with the spirits. And we see um, in a language it being expressed even. So in Paris, I've been watching the show by the way, so I haven't fact checked this either. But um, they call the orgasm the little deaths because every time you orgasm, you are reborn, right? And this just shows how much alchemical transformation is taking place, whether this is being done through intercourse or masturbation. And regardless of your fantasies, they are welcome, they are indulged, and you'll notice that demons, angels, spirits, um, all kinds will actually have sexual interactions with humans. We see this within the Book of Enoch. Um, we see this in Greek mythologies, right? This is where we get demigods because they be hooking up with the humans, <laughs> you know? Um, and sexual is just such a primal, powerful energy, and it's very sacred. Um, with Salween coming up, and a holiday to honor, to celebrate the ancestors, and a time where they would light bonfires, they would dress up the kids to trick the evil spirits, and just a lot of stuff but one of their things was around a goddess and this goddess that would open this portal of Samhain that would allow these spirits to come through was symbolized through her vagina right and the vagina is one of the most ancient symbols that has came a source of creation a source of power and um, we even see this within Egyptian mythology so it is very interesting how we see that digress and this really did begin with the Greeks with Pandora's box where they kind of start noticing the power of woman the power of sensuality the power of tapping and losing control that you do lose with giving into sex sex in itself is giving up power um and that's what it is why bdsm in itself is powerful whether you are the dumb or the sub the dumb is taking someone trusting i mean you know that you're taking that control and you're holding and caring for that energy so that's taking you outside yourself and when you are submissive, your ego is being pushed back on your soul, your psychic, your energy to come forward through that experience, right? So both roles are very powerful as they are reciprocated by willing participants. I will say everything should be consensual. Um, and this is taken, and this energy is something that they talk about within Tantra teachings. We're towards the Kundalini Awakening, holding, not releasing the cum to help you ascend, or to release the cum, to release the orgasm, to manifest, to materialize. Like, sex has just been a source of power and magic for thousands of years. And the biggest thing that started a precedent, and it wasn't the Greeks necessarily it did, I think, the Christians did inspire and it just went down, but it was Christianity, was the Abrahamic faiths, and they, it was because of Eve, and it is unfairly, there's a double standard when it comes to sex with women and men, and there's different kinds of double standards out there, like, that are all wrong, any double standard is bad regardless of gender, but this is definitely something directed more towards women, um, and that is because of the influence we have through history, through the Abrahamic religions and culture. Um, and it's because Eve brought in sin. It was her fault. It was her fault, the reason why Jesus even had to come here to save us, right? It's all her. And um, even one of the most feared demons, which I have, 
her altar being represented back there, the great dark mother Lilith, who was originally an ancient goddess, she definitely came, I think, to take men as she seduced them and take their soul and hunt them at night and all of that. Like, it was a very feared thing. And this was really stripped away women's rights. Like, ancient Egyptian times, women were even allowed to have property and things like that. Um, and the Christian faith, a woman was pretty much could be abused by a man. She couldn't divorce her husband. Um, in fact, you couldn't, a woman could not divorce her husband um, forever. Like, even in the United States, it wasn't until, like, the 1960s, the Divorce Act law passed that finally allowed, that gave women the power to truly just get a divorce. There was another act before that, or a bill before that, that allowed them to do it if they can prove that there was infidelity, but it was so hard to prove that it really just wasn't a thing. So it really took forever until the 60s for women to be able to divorce a man. Like, it was against the law. Like, dead ass, right? It wasn't just about women voting. Like, this is how much control they were under the men. And this is something that we still see stemmed as women don't get as respected because with the Abrahamic religions, it is that God is first, then it is the man, the father, then the woman, right? The woman's always pushed down. And we see this even within the occult community, people that claimed to be even satanic or working with demons or left-hand path or pagans or heathens, and yet you see them slut-shaving, which comes from the Christian culture. So the cool thing about the Vikings, if you wanted to be a woman during back in that time, you would want to be a Viking because they had more freedom, more rights. They were allowed to divorce a man. Um, uh, they were, like, they just, they had, they had more respect. They can go, there was a thing about them being shield maidens where they can actually go out and raid the villages with the men. Um, and in Iceland, we see a very matriarchy society when the men take off into the voyage and show how important and prominent their roles really are. You, so it's a very interesting thing, and they were pagans. They respected the woman. And again, we have the sacred prostitution with the satyrs, which is part of the Vikings, um, specifically with Iceland. And it's just something to really consider because when people in our community encourage the slut shaming you are encouraging the oppression of the christian religion now this has nothing to do with god this has nothing to do with angels christianity plagiarized ancient stories and corrupted the deities and they even corrupted the image of god right god could have been god is so god is a complex energy a very um not, it's not necessarily individual, but of expansion of many spirits, is what I would say God is. But because of humans' agendas, of political reasons, and we see this with pagans too, like, they corrupt the information and they make it where it fits into their fears, into what they want to control, what they do not understand, and then they play out these spirits, these gods, to mimic their world, their reality as they perceive it, not what the spirits actually are or what they are teaching, bringing down to the people. So please be mindful of that. So I wouldn't blame that source of energies but the people themselves of the time and their ignorance. But that ignorance has bleeded into today, right? Um, and we see this getting slut-shamed. In fact, I've been slut-shamed into this community um, by someone that claimed to be a priest of Satan. Uh, what happened is I didn't satisfy his ego clearly as I wasn't going to kiss his ass and I was not entertaining his threats. So therefore, somehow I became a prostitute. Now, the fact is, a pro being called a prostitute shouldn't even be considered a form of slander. Now, even though I've never been a prostitute, I have no reason for anyone to say that. I have no criminal record. You can't find a mug shots. But people can also say whatever they want online, make YouTube videos or make Facebook posts. And there's going to be people that believe it, even though there's no evidence. It's just which is what creates the mob mentality and why people bully and why it's such a... It's just very problematic in itself. But in this community, a prostitute should be respected, right? Like, why would it matter? Like, more power to them. As long as they're doing of their own free will, power to them, right? There is no shame in that. And there's a lot of guys I see where they make very misogynistic posts where they talk about a real woman, right? And we see girls say real men once in a while. Um, still not cool. Real woman, real man, whatever. It's pretty lame. Um, but it usually it's talking about the girl. A girl 
will most likely say that she's had sex with less men than what she actually has, why a man is most likely to up their numbers. That's where we can see that so is very prominent, and that is because a woman will be degraded, but not degraded in the way they like it. See, and this is now where we get into porn. A lot of women do porn because they actually love it. They love the fetish. They love expressing. They are... Um, and they're empowered by it because a lot of people think that they're vibrating low or they're just devalued. Like, nah, 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 nah. They're powerful. They're tapping into the divine goddess of creation herself, okay? They are tapping into the forbidden energies. They are tapping into demonic energies, whether they know it or not, because that's the dark, that's the forbidden, that's the sexual, that's the hidden. That is what the occult, the source really is tapping into that going deep and exploring manifesting which you wouldn't try to hide away from people people that might call shameful or naughty or whatever right and this is being expressed and we've actually seen a lot of benefits as a result of porn for that reason we've seen a lot of people become more accepting of gays of the lgbtq community in general um we've seen people get more um, expressive in their fetishes, not so willing to oppress, and we've also seen teen um, pregnancies go down, and a bunch of other benefits, and there is a darker side to that, we got the sex life trade, it is a real issue, but the sex life trade would exist regardless, as there's also prostitutes that are forced to it, and that is just an unfortunate thing, but that is not a direct result of porn, that's just been happening, there's places where prostitution is legal, and they still have a sex life trait there. And it's because it's not about sex. It's about power. 100%. And that is something entirely different. It's narcissistic. It's psychopathic. Whatever you want to call it, it's disgusting. Um, but that is something separate. It doesn't express what porn truly is. And porn draws in a lot of energies, a lot of spirits to it. Um, and it also creates egregores and all that. But not necessarily nasty things. And it's not that you're receiving or being brought down level. It's actually something that you can use in your tool of ascension. As long as you don't come obsessed. You don't want anything to take control over you. Um, but it's definitely a tool that you can use, especially if you don't have a partner. Um, and then you can also do a lot of astral working and encourage spirits and invite them in to have sex with you. Um, and again, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female, this is something that can be expressed to empower your soul. And it's just a really beautiful thing to do. Um, because when you are having sex, it can take you out of your body. You can really connect and this can help you enter into a trance. So if you do it right, which there's not a wrong way to have sex, like as long as you're enjoying yourself, you can. But if you want to do it for a spiritual purpose, and if you're trying to enter into a different state of mind, it is really using those movements, that connection. That's what yoga is, right? Yoga is meditating in movement to connect with the divine. That's what you're doing with sex. You are moving, you're meditating, you're flowing, you're in the moment, and then you allow yourself to flow and enter up into the higher plane. Therefore, being you connecting with this very energy of sex itself. And this is something that you want to call, and we can take back the word slut, um, because being a slut could be something that should represent being proud of your sexual um, feminine divine, right? Whether you are a male or female, this is, again, dominantly towards female, they get shamed for this, unfortunately. But you should be able to express yourself. You should be able to go on Facebook and post a picture that reveals everything almost like it's okay like i don't know why facebook censors people because honestly if a guy can have his shirt off and show his nipple a woman should be able to as, as far as i'm concerned if you want to share pictures and videos of yourself i say go for it because that's if that's what fills you empowered now if you're doing it from an insecure place state that's a different motive and something that should be worked through with healing, with shadow work, right? It should come from a place of self-love, of self-compassion, and for fetishes, too. Like, if you're doing it just because it is your desire, like it is for me. Like, I love being, like, my boyfriend, I met him on a fetish website, and he is dominant. He is, um... He takes control, and I give him that control, right? I like to be dismissive. I like to be called a slut. I like to be called a bitch. I like to get slapped around a little bit and choked a little bit. I think it's hot to turn on. It doesn't come from a bad place or lack of confidence. It comes from that desire, that drive, and that's something I've had since I was, like, really, like, a teenager. So it's not something that society created or formed or was 
spawned from porn. Like, those were desires that came forth. And this could be direct past lives or things like that, too. Who knows? But it's not a bad thing, either. It's not necessarily bad or good. It's just the human. And the humans have been brainwashed to think that it's all, it has nothing to do with um, the act of sex, but procreation, that's it. And we are now realizing that's not true. And we're seeing that because porn is making us aware of that because people are watching monsters. In fact, I love it. I don't know what you guys are, but hentai stuff and all that weird tentacle porn is very entertaining to watch. Uh, and aliens and monsters, guess what? You don't want to procreate with that. That doesn't come from your lips or what they say with your eyes or your skin color or how blushy your cheeks are. No, these things are filthy, disgusting. You would not want nothing to do with them probably in real life. Maybe. I don't know. I think I've really drawn a strong fetish for beastly looking things, monsters wise. Damn porn corrupted me just kidding <laughs> but we've seen that that it's more premortal it's more untamed it's wild and it shouldn't be shamed and if a girl has had sex with multiple partners that's her business and there's nothing wrong with that and if you've had sex with multiple partners as a man then again that's okay like and if you want to be with just one person that's okay if you want to have an orgy that's okay like none of it is wrong how you want to express your sexuality do so do not let people shame you because that is nothing but their being victim of society, of training them how to think. And it directly relates to the Christian faith. So it's kind of funny when they're being hypocritical and really not connecting with the spirits. Because this is a very powerful way to connect with the spirits. They're disconnecting and letting their ego take control. And again, the ego is the external experience. It's not your true self. It's not your soul. It's not even the individual part of you right you are an individual without your ego but your ego is what experiences things externally and then externally we experience a culture that tells us a woman should only be with one man she shouldn't do this or she shouldn't be like that she shouldn't dress like that or she's like this if she does nah she can do whatever the hell she wants right and that is the thing powerful about the symbol of the great dark mother lilith is even though she is many things she does bring the empowerment of sexual freedom to the woman, right? It's not about taking advantage or preying on men, but bringing back that power within us and owning that and not letting ourselves be victim of society. Even though I prefer to be submissive, it has nothing to do with that. It's not because I'm being forced. It's because I'm doing it because I want it and to embrace those desires and then to have that control, to have that freedom and liberation. And it's just something that everybody should be able to experience that ecstasy and just be you you know and it's unfortunate because in other countries like a woman will be brutalized down there destroyed just because they thought maybe she had sex with another man or that they just don't want her to experience pleasure during sex because a woman can't experience like it's brainwashing is all hell in some of these third world countries and it's really sad and it's really sad to see that even though we've progressed so far within our first world countries we still result into slut shaming and we do it even within the occult community and i'd definitely like to see an end to that and us embracing our inner sluts, our power, divine, sexual, and freedom to be just who you are. Anyways, thank you for watching and infernal blessings.